At Infusionsoft, we get a lot of questions about how to run and grow a small business. That's why we created this video series, to provide an entertaining, informative, and above all, useful resource for small business owners to get answers to their most pressing questions. But after filming the first few episodes, we realized the name needed a change in direction. Luckily, it wasn't legally binding, so there were no birth certificates to rescind. Ultimately, we decided to call the show Ignition, to fuel your small business. But instead of scrapping all the episodes altogether, we decided to come back to the studio and explain, just kidding, we're totally Ignition now. Thanks for watching, and if you have a question that you'd like answered on Ignition, please email us at blog at infusionsoft.com. Great host, that looks good. Uh, can we get just one more take here? No, I think we got in. Uh, just, just one more, that's all. No, we're good. I guess we're good. Okay, people, let's wrap it up. Hi, I'm Ellis. Welcome to And I'm Ramon Ray. Thanks for watching. So the is a show where we really want to help small businesses with the challenges they face. And I think we find that small businesses, out of the many challenges they have, one of the biggest challenges they have is their marketing and sales. So what we want to hope to do, what we will do for you, is to help you understand how you can get more customers and how you can even take the customers you have and have them buy more from you. That's what we want to help you do with this. That's right. That's why we are here every week to answer your small business sales and marketing questions. Awesome. So Ellis, with that, what is our question of the week today? This week's question is from Luis. I run my own dental practice and we've been using social media, mainly Facebook and Twitter, and I noodle with Instagram sometimes, for at least a year, but we get close to no response. We have a younger guy in the office who does most of it, but I try to post occasionally. I'm at the point where I'm considering just shutting it down altogether because it's become a time suck in return for a few random likes. But I also hear from so many people that social media can do wonders for your business. Is this true? Am I just wasting my time or is there an actual plan I could put in place that would not take up tons of time and would actually pay off? Wow, that is an inspiring and deep question. I mean, many people are tweeting and LinkedIn-ing. Is that a word? LinkedIn-ing? It is now. Doing something. And uh, they, think they're, they think they're wasting their time. So, yep. thankfully, Ellis, it's not just you and I. Right. But we have with us today Stacy Harris, who's a social media strategist and an expert, not just in social media, but what I like in standing out online. So with that, Stacy, welcome to the Success Lab. Thanks for being here. Thank you guys for having me. I'm really excited about this question because you're right. It is a big, big pain point for a lot of people. Awesome. Well, great. Where would you start? The first, the answer is yes, there is a plan that you can have. And that's why you're not liking what's happening now is because you didn't take that step up front of creating the plan. Mm. A lot of entrepreneurs sort of jump in to that space of, of tweeting and LinkedIning mm -hmm. and Facebooking, <laughs> we use that ing to whatever, Instagramming. Uh, and they never really think about why they're doing it or even who they want to connect with. Because ultimately skipping those de decisions leads to a lot of what I call throwing stuff at the internet, which ah. is not always super helpful. The internet's not very sticky. No, it's not, and it really is kind of particular about you knowing what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so is it too late for Louise to create a plan? It's not too late. The fact is, you're kind of ahead of the game because now you have numbers. You have some place to start mm -hmm. so you know what's not working. And sometimes that's the most valuable information we can get is, okay, what's not working? What do we want to change? Instead of looking at sort of a big whiteboard and being like, okay, where are the ideas? <laughs> you Good have point. something to start from. So my suggestions would be remember you're local. So think local. Think about Facebook. Think about Google Place pages um, mm -hmm. because those are going to help you from an SEO perspective as well. Um, and but, you said SEO perspective. SEO stands right. for? Search engine optimization. Awesome. I had to think. I'm like, oh, wait, do I know that? <laughs> but yeah, it, it's going to help you. And the nice thing about those, those place pages is they do have that double edge of SEO and social media. But really, it comes down to don't worry about being all the places. Just because the young guy in your office says that Instagram is where everybody's at does not necessarily mean that your dental practice needs to be on Instagram. Don't necessarily need to Instagram like pictures of your mouth like, hey, cavity. <laughs> no, I'm not double tapping that, which is how you like things on Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, scroll, scroll. Um, I, funnily enough, I was, funnily? Funnily enough, mm -hmm. I was talking to a client earlier today who is a dentist, ah. and we were talking about Instagram, and she goes, as fascinated as I am by people's mouths, I don't know that my patients necessarily want to see a lot of pictures of other people's mouths. Right. So, so would you recommend not. that a dental practice avoid Instagram? I would say let's not make it a priority. Instead, okay. let's focus on two networks that we know are going to serve us. So Facebook is going to be great. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the Google Place pages. Also, what's nice is you can your content is going to be sort of similar. Images, um, 
long form text. So you're gonna have less to create up front. So let's go with our easiest barriers to entry. Let's make the most of those two places and then we can think about adding Instagram because we'll have a community to launch that too. We'll have people to say, come spend time with us in this new place. If you focus in and do two networks really well, you'll spend a lot less time trying to figure everything out. It's kind of that jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. Awesome. Well, wow, it's a lot of information. Great. And let's go back to the plan, Stacy. Is that you said that uh, who's our expert, who's our questioner here? Luis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said Luis. It wasn't too late for him to make a plan. So, simply, and I know again we don't have like 500 hours here. What would you where would you suggest he start? He's done it. He knows what doesn't work. How does he first start to make that first plan? The very first step of any social media strategy is going to be who am I trying to talk to? Mm. If you don't know who you're trying to talk to, you can't make any of the decisions afterwards. Uh, and once you know who you're talking to, a lot of those choices make a lot of more sense. Where do I wanna be? What kind of content do I need to put out? How often do they wanna see it? What time of day am I posting it? All of that is gonna be answered by knowing who you're talking to because then you can say, okay, well, how often do they, would they wanna see me? What, kind, what time of day are they online? You know, if your ideal clients, talking about the, the dental office, they're probably online in the evenings, especially Facebook. They're probably not spending a lot of time on Facebook at 9 a.m., or at least their bosses hope not. Um, so targeting those late in the day, afternoon, evening, think about how many of us sit with our iPads or our smartphones mm -hmm. scrolling away as we watch that TV. You know, the TV has become a second screen instead mm -hmm. of the device. That's the time they're on. So that's when we should be targeting our messages instead of spending a lot of time posting things at 7 a.m. when they're trying to get their kids out the door and to work. So a lot of those strategy questions come from that ideal client piece. When you know who you want to talk to, it's a lot easier to make those choices. Okay, so when you know who you want to talk to, how do you make something like brushing your teeth and engaging mm -hmm. Facebook posts? Because mm -hmm. no one likes to floss. No one. <clears throat> and that's why they need to go. To, well, and no one, not a lot of us really like going to the dentist. No. So we have to make this thing that not a lot of us want to prioritize in our lives. Right. Or find a lot of excuses to push down on the to-do list, and we have to make it engaging. The nice thing about social media is by making yourself stand apart and start building those relationships with potential patients before they reach the door, you've kind of made them more likely to come in the door at all because they're already comfortable with us. Mm -hmm. So remember that everything you talk about doesn't have to be a brush your teeth reminder or have you flossed. Become a part of your community. Talk about local community activities. Make it a place where people can share their local events. Um, a lot of local dentist offices are really great about participating with, you know, getting kids in the office and making those good habits early. Share those kind of things. Share your activity with the community. Also, there is a lot of really quality, corny teeth humor out there. <laughs> Just go with it. But make sure that you're talking to your ideal clients and make sure you're being true to your offices, your brand's voice, whether you're a dentist office or something else. Be true to that voice that your brand has. Two, two things come to my mind, uh, Stacey. Another question for you is, when, do you, when would you advise a small business owner, entrepreneur, to hire someone like yourself? Um, that's a good question. Because I think that for small businesses, um, tell me if you think I'm right. If not, we can argue, and that's great. We can have a debate here. But um, I think, one, that there is, many of them can do it themselves. I think yes. with some strategies, read a good book, best practices. But I would guess, I know it's been my journey, at some time, you should hire. Um, I have my view when that should be, but I'm curious, when do you think is the best time to say, you know what? I need to hire someone to help me with this. So a lot of social media consultants are gonna be super mad about this answer because I don't think it's the first thing you should do. Because the reality is when you come to me and you want me to build you a strategy or you want me to help you execute your strategy or you want me to teach you to build a strategy, you need to know a few things. You need to know who your ideal clients are. You need to know what your brand's voice is. You need to know what your goals are. And that's not necessarily something everybody has the moment they start their business, especially if it's their first business. I think when we start our second or third business, we have a little more of that information up front because we realize how valuable it is. But I know a lot of clients come to me or potential clients come to me and their first few months and they're like, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to build. And they're like, I want to talk to everybody. I want to change the whole world, mm. which is a very admirable goal, mm. but very hard to market to. <laughs> mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's once you have that clarity around who you're talking to, what you want out of social, what you want out of your business, uh, and how it ties into your other pieces, how, what this part plays in the rest of your marketing, because, and more people are going to get mad about this, social media is not a marketing plan. Mm. It's a piece of your marketing plan. Mm. Right. Well, Stacy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you have you great guys for knowledge me. and advice. Absolutely. And I don't think we've ever had any experts sitting in the chair that had beautiful hair like you have. I don't thank think. you. So, yeah. <laughs>
Because yeah. I never sat in the yeah. chair, Ramon. Well, That's yes. right. In that chair, yes, in that chair. That chair is covered, though. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciated it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this. If you're an expert and would like to be on the show, or if you have a question, we definitely want you to reach out to us at the. And where can they do that, Ellis? At blog at infusionsoft.com. <laughs>